are you? It's Monday morning. <laughs> uh, maybe you're just getting going. Maybe you're already at work. Maybe you're taking a coffee break and spending it with me or you know, whatever. I'm really thankful to have the opportunity to be with you today on this 12th of October. It's a rainy day here in Northwest New Jersey, but uh, I hope it's a sunny day in your heart. Let's talk about making life richer today. Yesterday at Faith Discovery, that I, where I serve as pastor, I spoke about heaven. There was a time in my life when I thought pastors who spoke about heaven needed to, quote, get a life. <laughs> yes, in the heyday of my 30s, I wondered why anyone would concern themselves beyond heaven, beyond thinking of heaven as their eternal home occasionally. You know, I had made my reservation through Jesus Christ. There was a covenant. He had a place prepared for me, and that was good. It was out there somewhere way down the road. And about the only time I really thought seriously about heaven was when, as a pastor, I conducted funerals. But the truth is that the promise of heaven makes life richer right now. It's true. Paul writes, you trust in Christ Jesus and that you love all of God's people. You do this because you are looking forward to the joys of heaven. Yeah. You love God's people and you trust Jesus more because you are looking forward to the joys of heaven, Colossians chapter 1. You see, heaven is not an escapist idea to avoid life's realities. Heaven is is the lens that clears our perspectives so that we will live with our priorities in order. Just a couple of miles up the road from my house is a sacred spot on this earth for me. Now, for some of you, it's a grim place. It's called a cemetery. But there, there are stone markers that mark the plots of ground where the bodies of my wife and my parents lay awaiting the resurrection of Jesus Christ and it is a place of sadness to be sure, but it is also a place of reminder that helps me to understand that my life here is finite, but there is heaven that waits that is eternal. I remember there, as I do often these days, that God has prepared a whole new wonderful existence for those of us who are in Christ that has no pain, no ending, no grief, no sin. Kevin Miller wrote a long time ago about the difficulty that we have in reaching an understanding beyond our limited grasp of the amazing existence that God has made for us. He writes a fun little parable. Let me read it to you. Let's imagine, he said, I tell my four-year-old son, Andrew, when you grow up, you're going to get married and your honeymoon will be one of the most delightful and wonderful times of your life. <laughs> Andrew replies, oh, you mean I can take my toy dinosaurs along? Uh, no, son, you probably won't want to, but you'll still have a fantastic time. Well, can Jeffrey come along? He's my next door friend. No, you won't want to take Jeffrey. Well, I don't know if I want to go on a honeymoon, Dad. It doesn't sound any fun without my dinosaurs or my friend. <laughs> Trust me, Andrew, you will enjoy it, even though you can't understand much about it right now. I like that, don't you? It makes me laugh. Heaven's a lot like that. There's an incredible joy, a higher, richer level of understanding than, and life than we've ever experienced here. It's natural, though, not to completely grasp it. The writers of Scripture saw visions, and they tried to describe what they saw in language and images that were available. Isaiah and Zechariah and John tell us about amazing creatures that defy anything that we could possibly think about. He, they talk about the throne of God, a sea of glass, about smoke, and all those wonderful images that we read in the Bible, and their words are best understood by understanding this. They were using earthly language to describe a completely unearthly place. And if we force their words too literally, we will miss the glories of heaven that awaits. There are several things that we can know about heaven that I think can super encourage us this morning. The first is this primary truth. God is there and we will know him personally. The God that we have loved even devoutly from a distance, whose plans and purposes sometimes mystify and confuse us, whose actions are sometimes beyond our understanding and figuring out, he will then be our friend, our father, accessible, and we will worship him, the Bible says, face 
to face. John attempts to show us the wonder of that moment when he says, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God will be with them and he will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying, no pain. All these things go on forever. Revelation 21. The second thing that I know about heaven that you can know is that it has beauty beyond our imagination. I know I've already touched on that, but John particularly in the Revelation, talks about dazzling splendor and streets of gold and pearly gates. And if you read that too literally, you'll, you'll conclude that he's describing some kind of upscale luxury hotel or he's describing some place like one of the finest lodgings in Vegas. That's not what heaven is. Again, John is trying to describe for us in words available to him, a place of unimaginable beauty. Think of it this way. Look at the world that God created for us, knowing it's a temporary place. The sunlight that sparkles across the river's surface. The sunset that dazzles us with the beauty. God made that for a place that's passing away. And Christian, as we gaze at that wildflower or the colors of a bird's plumage, we need to get enthused about the beauty that God would create for a place that is eternal where we will live with him. Number three, I know this about heaven. Everything is made new. There is no decay. Jesus said, when we store up treasures here on earth, we store them in a place where there's moth and rust. But he said, store your treasures in heaven for there there's no moth, no rust, no decay, no thieves. Yes, it's a place beyond all the things that make us so sad. Which brings me to that fourth point. Heaven is a place where joy is complete. It's the truth. Everything we know here in life, our happiest moments have closure. A baby is born, we're joyful. A grandparent dies, we're sad. Yeah. The pleasure of an amazing friendship is enjoyed, and then the note comes that the company's relocating them, and that friendship set aside sometimes. Summer's warmth is always followed by winter's chill. That's just the nature of human life. That's not pessimistic, but heaven knows nothing of those endings. Only joy reigns. Here's the big question I want to leave with you this morning. Are you prepared for heaven? Remember, we don't gain heaven because we've been good enough, because we have a church membership, or because we were nice people. <laughs> we're saved by the grace of Jesus Christ. Heaven is a gift that he offers to us, paid fully at his expense. I get to go to heaven not because of who I am, but because of who I know. Same is true for you. Do you know Christ as Savior? He gives us this invitation, Come, you who are blessed by my Father, Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the creation of the world. Don't lose sight of heaven. It'll make your life richer. Remember from time to time that this life is transitory. Heaven waits. Here's a word from the word as you start your new week. Spend some time meditating on the promise of eternal life, asking God to write heaven into your heart. Jesus said, don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God, trust in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. If it weren't so, I would have told you so. But I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you with me that you may be where I am. John chapter 14. Heavenly Father, as we begin a new week, I pray that you would set eternity in our hearts. Lord, I pray that the fear of death would be eclipsed by the anticipation of life eternal. Lord, I pray for my friends who are making choices today about life, about the way they'll invest this week. Give them wisdom, bless their steps. Lord, may our eyes be fixed on Jesus. Forgive us our sins and make us a holy people that honor and glorify your name, I pray in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Thank you, friends, for sharing with me today. God bless you. See you here tomorrow morning.